Hello, and thanks for watching another edition of ARFCOM News. Today I want to tell you some really good news, some pretty bad news, and some just plain bizarre news. But before we get started, I want to tell you about the fine mahogany night vision products offered to you by our friends at TNVC.com. Artfully handcrafted by earnest, hardworking Amish operators, TNVC night vision is unique and uncompromising, just like you. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. President Trump's royal decree banning bump stocks has been found unconstitutional by the 6th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. After some asshole used bump stock equipped rifles against innocent people at a concert in Las Vegas, the NRA encouraged President Trump to restrict bump stocks and he directed Attorney General Barr to come up with a way to classify them as machine guns. So the ATF dutifully invented a particularly creative way to apply the 1934 National Firearms Act to pretend as though it applies to bump stocks. It's impossible to say how many bump stocks were ever made, but the feds tell us they think about a half million of them were out there and only about a thousand were ever turned in. So obviously the other 499,000 of them must have been obediently destroyed, right? It's a real shame because it now seems they were never actually illegal in the first place. In 2019, the gun owners of America sued Attorney General Barr in his official capacity, contending the ban was unconstitutional and requesting an injunction against the government enforcing the law. That injunction was denied. The GOA appealed that decision to the Sixth Circuit, placing the Biden administration in the ironic position of defending Trump administration policy. Last week, the court found the ATF's opinion was wrong and they should feel bad. Judge Alice M. Batchelder wrote, It is not the role of the executive, particularly the unelected administrative state, to dictate to the public what is right and what is wrong. Judge Batchelder was explicitly critical of the application of Chevron deference in regard to criminal cases, and her opinion expresses fundamental concerns about executive branch overreach. She said, deferring to the executive branch's interpretation of a criminal statute presents at least three serious separation of powers concerns. One, it puts individual liberty at risk by giving one branch the power to both write the criminal law and enforce the criminal law. Two, it eliminates the judiciary's core responsibility of determining a criminal statute's meaning. And three, it reduces, if not eliminates, the public's ability to voice its moral judgments because it transfers the decision-making from elected representatives in the legislature to unaccountable bureaucrats in the executive's administrative agencies. I wish I had the time to read you this whole opinion. Batch Elder really hits it out of the park. She had me saying amen and hallelujah throughout. I'll link the decision down there in the doobly-doo, and I strongly recommend you read it if you have the time, but the TLDR is she roundly rejected the use of Chevron deference in criminal cases. The oversimplified version of Chevron deference is courts allow regulatory agencies to decide for themselves how to interpret law when that law is vague. Makes kind of a perverse sort of sense in regard to arcane regulations and subjects where Congress couldn't possibly predict every possible variation, if you grant they have any business regulating at that level in the first place. But the 1934 National Firearms Act is a criminal law with criminal penalties attached and the opinion of the appeals court is the lower court was wrong in applying Chevron deference. So that means you can all go dig up your bump stocks and happily burr all your ammo away into the backstop, right? Negative Ghost Rider, not so fast. All this ruling is saying is the lower court was wrong to not issue the injunction. I know this is a bit counterintuitive, but that doesn't mean the appeals court issued an injunction themselves. They kicked it back down to the lower court, so the issue is kind of in limbo. The lower court should issue an injunction, but there isn't one right now. Does that mean the ATF could still arrest you for a bump stock? Maybe? 
While there is no injunction, there probably will be, and they would still have to prosecute you, so theoretically they could absolutely harass people with arrests, but they probably wouldn't go anywhere anyway. And once an injunction is issued, courts will still need to decide whether F Troop's interpretation is indeed valid and it will be appealed multiple times. Like most court cases related to gun control, both sides will appeal as far as they can. One thing you can count on, though, is we'll keep a close eye on this for you. Stay tuned. And now for some bad news, but I'll see if I can try to let some positive light shine through anyway. The U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld a Hawaiian law which bans open carry except for hunting. Hawaii is a May issue state, which means it is theoretically possible to obtain a permit to carry a gun concealed, but the process is discretionary. In practice, there are literally no private citizens with active permits in the entire state of Hawaii. Without a permit to carry concealed, that leaves regular folks with no legal means of carrying a gun. That's one and a half million people who are unable to legally exercise their fundamental right to self-determination. The majority opinion, written by Judge J. Bybee, a W appointee, claims the government may regulate and even prohibit the open carrying of small arms capable of being concealed, whether they are carried concealed or openly. Indeed, we can find no general right to carry arms into the public square for self-defense. Obviously, this position is simply preposterous. The Heller decision affirmed that bearing arms is an individual right, and while Heller did allow some room for restrictions, it clearly does not allow for a blanket ban on carrying. Whether or not a ban is explicit in statute or simply the de facto state of affairs should be irrelevant to the court. The only thing which should matter is regular folks have no legal way to carry arms. That's why this Heller decision caused the District of Columbia to begin issuing carry permits. Judge, um, there is no frackin' way I'm gonna get this one right. Diarmud O'Scanlan, a Reagan appointee, Ronald Reagan, the actor, wrote the dissent saying, today a majority of our court has decided that the Second Amendment does not mean what it says. Instead, the majority holds that while the Second Amendment may guarantee the right to keep a firearm for self-defense within one's home, it provides no right whatsoever to bear, i.e. carry, that same firearm for self-defense in any other place. We now become the first and only court of appeals to hold that public carry falls entirely outside the scope of the amendment's protections. This Ninth Circuit ruling also runs counter to other district court rulings, which demands the Supremes settle the matter. And that's where the silver lining comes in. The Heller decision strongly implied a right to carry outside the home, which is why DC is shell issue now, but it didn't explicitly say states aren't allowed to ban the carry of arms outside the home entirely. Sure, anyone with a fifth grade reading comprehension can tell you that's what bear means, and the founders would tear their powdered wigs off at the notion a right only applies within one's own home, but apparently we need to spell this out. So this is likely going to SCOTUS, where the current court makeup is favorable to truth and reason. I suspect the eventual outcome here is SCOTUS will rule states have the authority to place reasonable restrictions on the manner of carry, such as requiring a permit to carry concealed, but they may not ban the bearing of arms altogether or use expensive, labyrinthine, arbitrary, and discretionary processes to prevent ordinary people from exercising their rights. What do you think? Will SCOTUS accept the case? Will they rule the right to bear arms includes the, you know, bearing of arms? Will Ross and Rachel end up together? Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Hold on to your butts. This next one is weird with a capital Al. For the sake of clarity, I'm going to relate the facts of this story as though they are verified without saying allegedly and according to after every single point. But you have to understand, this all comes from various sources and has varying levels of veracity. As always, my sources are listed down in the doobly-doo, so please read these articles for yourself. But here's the story as best I can piece together, allegedly, please no sue. 
Hunter Biden started dating his sister-in-law, Hallie Biden, in 2017 after his brother passed away. In 2018, Hallie got pissed at Hunter and took a 38 revolver from a lockbox in the trunk of his car and chucked it in a trash can outside a grocery store. When he found out it was missing, later in the day, Hunter said he freaked out and scared the shit out of her, so she went back to look for it, but it was gone. Hallie reported this to the store manager, who called the police. Delaware police began investigating, and the FBI got involved as well because they were already investigating Hunter for his taxes. While he was being questioned by police at the store, Hunter saw two Hispanic employees walk past and told the cops the store had some suspicious people working for it. When the police asked if he meant those two Hispanic men, he said, yeah, probably illegal. While all this was going down, the Secret Service visited the gun store where the gun was bought and asked to see the 4473, but the store owner refused. Later, the ATF stopped by and the owner provided them with the paperwork, of course. Hunter bought the gun on the 12th of October 2018, five days after being discharged from the Navy Reserve for failing a drug test, and of course, as you know, the 4473 asks if you do drugs. Apparently, the gun was found by a bum looking for cans in the trash, and several days later he turned it in to, well, uh, multiple stories covered this part, and they all simply say turned it in, so I don't know if he handed it off to the grocery store, but I assume he handed it in to police? It gets even weirder, though, because the Secret Service claims they had nothing to do with the investigation, and Sleepy Joe was not under their protection at the time. As of right now, I can't find any indication that Hunter or Hallie are being charged for anything at any level for any of this mess, and there is no reason to expect the president had any knowledge of the incident. Wild though, ain't it? Well friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy watching these things because I sure like making them for you. Would you like to know a secret to beating the ammo shortage? Although you cannot actually purchase any gun-related products at AR15.com slash deals, I'm looking at you, Mr. YouTube Sensor, AR15.com slash deals is constantly updated with links to the best scores on ammo, guns, and accessories so you can get the drop on the neckbeards before they snatch up all the good stuff. So bookmark AR15.com slash deals and check AR15.com slash deals every day. If you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, and all sorts of other gear to make you the bump in the night. And if you want a baller cap like mine or other ARFCOM swag, you can get it at brownells.com. Or you can buy fly shirts like this one in our Teespring store. Or, if you'd like to try your luck and see if you can win your choice of rad shirt from our Teespring store, post a comment containing the phrase, My government isn't working. Have you tried turning it off and on again? In the YouTube comments, and I will arbitrarily and unilaterally choose the best one. I love you.